Hello guys and welcome. I believe you are watching this video because you want to know more about CSIM Global Challenge. In today's lessons, we have an exciting topic for all of you. In uh, this video, we are going to talk about CSIM Global Challenge. We are going to dive deep into round 6 and learn how to win it by effectively using. We'll use the market outlook, the demand, the production, the R&D, marketing, logistics, tax, finance then after doing that we can check on our decisions checklist on the decisions that we have made and also we can look, go here into the projections and see what our projections are in terms of sales in terms of profits in terms of the margins that we have and the expenses and costs so without wasting much of our time let's start with the market outlook in the market outlook here we have a crucial update on the market demand cost and finance of the CSIM, this is, which is round six. So under the demand, if you look at uh, the demand here, they are saying that uh, market growth rates are showing interesting trends. While robust growth is expected to continue, it's essential, it's essential to be aware of the gradual decline in growth as markets mature. So the first tip here, if you read at the demand, you realize that we should focus on the European market where the growth rate is about is around 15%, and we should also consider catering for their appreciation for high technologies. Then the next tip is that we should also be cautious with Tech 3 product in the USA as it has been labeled as uh, lemon by the techno analytics. Also, we should ensure that our product are uh, adapting to our strategies accordingly. Then in terms of costs, here we should understand on the production cost and the environmental impact of uh, our, our decisions. If you look at uh, the information here, we, we know that here the in-house and the contract manufacturing costs in Asia are down this period and we should consider shifting some production activities to leverage these cost advantages. Also, we should be aware of the increasing costs due to the fees imposed by Nepalese government and the so the Nepalese government and uh, the Wildlife Foundation because the Wildlife Foundation is uh, imposing some, uh, uh, some, some, some fees to protect gorillas in the jungle. And uh, these fees will affect our fixed costs. Then uh, finally, we have the finance. The fin you should note that uh, in this uh, simulation, the finance market is ever changing. So we can examine the currency and interest rates development. So here we see that uh, the euro appreciates against the dollar while the Chinese rumble is gaining strength. We should also keep an eye on the exchange rates to make informed financial decisions. And uh, also, we should be prepared of the impact of the rising interest rates because the US Federal Reserve's decisions to increase rates by half a percentage point might have a ripple effect on Europe and Asia. So we should uh, factor this uh, into our financial planning. So without taking much of our time, let's get started. So after the market outlook, the market demand analysis is crucial for making informed decisions in round six. So we'll go into the demand. So in here, we see that from the market outlook, USA is expected to experience a significant market growth of around 20%. This is promising market to focus on, but let's keep an eye on consumer preferences and the emerging trend. So they say projecting a growth of 20%. So we'll give, put that 20%. Then with Asia, Asia is, uh, from the market outlook, we, we realize that Asia is showing even more promising growth with a predicted market growth of around 30%. But don't underestimate the potential of this region for your products. So here we'll give it 30%. Then uh, Europe market is projected growth. The growth in Europe market is projected at fifteen percent, and uh, while uh, slightly lower than other regions, it still represents an attractive opportunities for our market penetration. So here we'll give it fifteen percent. The next place is the network coverage forecast. If you look at uh, in the USA. Taekwondo boasts an impressive 100% network coverage. You can look at it uh, that way. Uh, while Take 2 slightly trails it behind with uh, 75%. The strong network coverage alone does not guarantee success. Though, consumers may still prefer a different technology, which is why we choose, for us, we choose to sell Take 1 and Take 2 in the USA. With CC market analysis, we predicted that uh, 
product one based on take one will approximately co cover a 9.9 percent so 9.9 percent then uh, for product two which is utilizing uh, take two product we estimate to secure a market share of uh, about uh, 17.5 in this round then uh, for asia because uh, in asia you look at uh, if you look at uh, so this is asia if you look at the network coverage we see that uh, Take one has a network coverage of 100%, while take uh, three has surpassed take two, and take three has 67% network coverage. So that's why we, we, we are projecting to sell take, uh, take three in Asia. So for take one here, take one will uh, grab a market share of 13%. Then uh, for take two, no, for take three, sorry, which is in Asia, will grab a market of 4.0 because uh, it's a new product and you don't want to produce more you just want to produce a significant amount so that we can uh, decide we can look at how the market will respond to our new product now in the european or in europe here we have uh, europe uh, take one as a network coverage of 100 percent then uh, take two follows with a network coverage of 60 uh, percent we can't produce tech four in uh, this one because uh, I believe it's uh, a bit expensive. So we are projecting uh, in Europe for tech one, we are projecting to have a 7.0% market share. Then uh, for tech two, so no, this is 7.7, .7, so 7.7. .7. Then for tech two will about uh, 25. Okay, so that's it, and uh, there you have it. So because uh, the demand has allowed us to make informed decisions based on our network coverage and in consumer preferences. So that's why in the USA, product one and product two will have uh, take one and take two. Then in Asia, we'll have uh, product one and product two will have uh, take one and take three. Finally, in Europe, product one and product two will have uh, take one and take two. So the next thing that we'll uh, do after here is uh, let's go to the R&D and uh, look at the decisions that we have made in the research and development. In the next, uh, the next part is the R&D. And uh, uh, in the R&D, we are looking at the investments made in three technologies. That's it, take one, take two, and take three. But that's not all because we have an existing twist as we'll be explore the addition of two new features for Tech 3. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, our journey begins with Tech 1. And uh, during the R&D phase, our team invested or uh, invested 22. So I'll invest 22,000. To develop uh, and refine this technology, the goal is to bring uh, innovative advancements to our product. And these investments will play, will play a crucial role for its successful development. So moving on to take two, we stepped up our game and uh, allocated 30. So here we'll allocate 30,000. So that's 300. So that's 30, yeah, 30,000. And uh, this technology will promise to enhance our product capabilities. Uh, even further, and uh, the investments was necessary to ensure the viable its viability and competitiveness in the market. Now, let's talk about Tech 3 because uh, uh, Tech 3 turned out to be an intriguing aspect of this project. So our team invested, uh, so we'll uh, invest 22,000. So here we'll invest uh, 21,000. And uh, this technology, uh, has a lot of promise because but what made it stand out is that the two new features that we added so we'll add uh, two new uh, uh -huh, two additional features so these features were a game changer and uh, they had a potential to live to revolutionize the way our product is perceived in the market so let's take a closer look of the of uh, these two features we see that Let's say for the 
for the first feature we have announced of, of our experience, maybe we introduced a user-friendly interface and streamlined our navigation. Or uh, maybe let's say for the other features that uh, we can optimize algorithms and the cutting edge technology in our in our in our in our these technologies. So we see that uh, the combined investments uh, for in-house development we have uh, seventy three. So this is seventy three thousand. So that will uh, go into into us developing of uh, in-house. Then. Uh, in the addition of uh, these two features will give a competitive advantage to our product in this round. So let's move on to production. So let's move on. So in the USA, we have two in-house production lines. So we have uh, line one and line two. So after careful an analysis, I decided to allocate 47% of the capacity to line one and 53% uh, of our capacity to line two. Additionally, I'll utilize the contract manufacturing. So in contract manufacturing, I decided uh, to produce uh, eight, 821 units for product line one and uh, 1,000 units for product line two. So if you turn our attention to the Asian market, so in the Asian market, we'll allocate 53% of the of our capacity to product line one and 47 percent of our capacity to product line two and uh, for product line two it will uh, produce tech three product then uh, furthermore our contract manufacturing for asia market it was one one thousand two hundred and six for tech one and uh, 600 units for tech uh, three product each new plant will require an investment of uh, so under investment so under the investment, after the demand estimates, these are my demand estimates for these uh, three products. Then uh, we realize that uh, each new plant will require an investment of. Uh, so in USA I had uh, two hundred and eighty thousand. Then in Asia I invested uh, three hundred and twenty thousand. So with the uh, these strategic investments will not only help us meet current demands but also position us for future growth and success because the aim of this game is to increase sales and increase profits. Then uh, with the SSM pro production, we have strategically allocated capacity to meet the varying demands in different regions. By We have decided to balance the in-house development and the contract manufacturing because we can effectively serve our customers while optimizing on the cost. Now the next uh, part is the marketing. So let's move on to marketing. And uh, before we dwell into marketing, so it's better we look at the results for the previous round. So if you look at the marketing reports, so we'll go into the marketing report. Here, here the marketing report in the USA, we, are, uh, we had a market share of 17. 17.7 and take two was 43. Then in terms of pricing, we pr we priced our uh, product one at 350 and we sold 979 units. That's for take one. Then for take two, we priced it at 150 and we, we sold 1,720 units. So let's go on to Asia. In the Asia market, here we had uh, a total market share of 24.38 in tech one and 33.30 in tech two. And uh, we realized that here we saw, uh, we priced our product at uh, 2000, which is in uh, Asian currency and we, we, we giving, giving it four features. Then we sold 4,393 units. Then for tech two here, we sold uh, 3,000, uh, we, we, we priced our tech two product at uh, 3,000 giving it five features and we sold uh, 1,794. Then in Europe, so in Europe, here we take one product had 10.56. Then uh, the market share for take two product was 39.36. In terms of pricing, our, pro, our take one product was priced at 300 and, uh, at 180, sorry, and we managed to sell uh, 365 although the demand for the units was uh, 996. Then uh, for Tech2 here, we 
priced our product at 220 giving it five features we sold 2212 uh, units and uh, the market uh, the market demand was 300477 so we with that in mind so let's go to the marketing uh, marketing part and make decisions so here in the USA we'll uh, be selling two products that uh, take one and take two so for take one we'll maintain uh, its five features so we'll, we are not going to change any five features but we'll reduce the selling price from uh, 350 to 340 so we'll reduce it to 340 this will uh, enable us attract more customers additionally we'll increase the promotion budget to 15000 to create a stronger marketing presence so we'll give it 15000 now if we shifting our focus to take two we'll enhance the product by adding uh, one feature so we already know it's uh, it has six features now to reflect uh, the improved offering we'll raise the selling price to 460 so we'll raise it to 460 and allocate a promotion budget of 20,000 so this will drive the brand awareness as you move to the Asian market so the next one is the Asian market here we'll adjust our marketing strategy for take one and take three so for take one we'll enhance its features by increasing them from four to five so the features will increase them to five then this uh, will help attract more customers then we'll set our selling price by 2100 and allocate a promotion budget of 20,000 so I had already done this so I can still uh, repeat it 20,000 this will create a strong princess market now let's introduce uh, move on to tech 3 so since it's a new product we need to increase the awareness and achieve uh, to achieve this we'll keep tech 3 with the four features so I'll give it uh, four features. Then uh, positioning uh, the four features will position it as a competitive option because so and also to boost its uh, visibility, we'll allocate a significant promotional budget of twenty five thousand. So that's why we did uh, twenty five thousand. So this one will uh, increase on our brand uh, awareness and uh, visibility. So. The European market will tailor our marketing strategies for Tech One and Tech Two. So for Tech One, we'll maintain its uh, current five features. So we'll give it five features. So Tech One will give it uh, five features and sell, set the selling price at still uh, 180. Then uh, the selling price will uh, the promotion budget will give it 13,000. Now, for Tech 2 in Europe, here we'll keep its five features intact but slightly increase the selling price to 220 to, en to enhance its uh, value. Then, uh, promotion budget will raise it from 12,000 to 15,000. Now, you see that uh, by customizing our marketing strategies based on the regional preferences and market com conditions, we can enhance our market share in each region because uh, the aim of this game it it allow us it, it will allow you to fine tune your, your product features pricing and promotion budget in an effort to cater for the diverse consumer demands now let's look on to move after making decisions in demand production r d and marketing our next step is uh, logistics so let's move on to logistics so let's move on to now under the logistic part, here we'll, uh, we'll we, this is where we'll be exploring the strategic uh, priorities for Tech One, Tech Two, and Tech Three. You, you realize that in this uh, fast-paced world of international business, setting the right priorities for market expansions can make all the differences. So let's dive in. So starting with Tech One, we'll outline the market expansion priorities, and for this technology. Our top priority is to target the USA market first, so that's why you see I started with the USA, because the United States market will offer a massive consumer base and an advanced technological landscape, and this will make an ideal uh, launchpad for Taekwondo products. 
and uh, once we have et- established uh, in uh, USA, the coin will turn its attention to the Asian market, which because with its vast population and diverse cultures and the rapidly growing uh, economies, Asia will present a significant growth opportunity for our SESIM company. Then uh, lastly, and uh, for take one product in the in, in this one, lastly Europe will, will come into focus as the third priority market for take one because Europe matures market and uh, tech savvy consumers make it an attractive destination for the expansion also. Moving on to take two, we'll examine on its strategic priorities and uh, similar to take one, take two's first priority is to establish a strong presence in the USA market. Following Easter sex in the USA, Tech2 will also set its uh, sights on Asia and uh, recognizing the region's Im- immense growth and potential aligned with the market expansion strategy for Tech1 because Tech2 will also have Europe as its last final priority uh, market. And uh, by entering the Europe later in the expansion plan, Tech2 can build upon its successes in USA and Asia. Now let's explore the market uh, priorities for Tech1. Uh, for take uh, for take uh, three because take three will adopt a unique approach of its expansion uh, uh, expansion strategy because uh, for take three the primary focus is on the Asian market because as a region known for its uh, rapid technological advancement and the ever growing demand targeting the Asia first aligns with take three Take three strength and objectiveness. So here, following Asia, take three will move to Europe. So that's why you see I, I started with Asia, Europe, then tapping into the continent's diverse market and uh, catering on its demand for innovative logistics solution. Lastly, take three will uh, USA will become the final priority market for take three because by entering the USA market uh, last, take three can leverage on the insights gained from its successes in Asia and Europe and uh, make a strong impact into the USA. So that's why you see I, I had to do it. Now let's on move on to the tax. So we're going to the tax. And uh, here we'll uh, set the our tax transfer to one because uh, the concept, we just have to explore the concept of transfer pricing and its significance for businesses. And uh, this one will will be emphasizing the importance of setting transfer pricing at one because the transfer pricing will allow companies to manage profits between subsidiaries for various reasons. So here we will not talk much about it. So let's go on to finance. Here in uh, in finance, in this section, we'll just explore the concept of uh, dividend payment and the impact on raising the shareholder value because you should know that Dividends will play an uh, will play a crucial role in a company's financial strategy, and uh, they are important for rewarding shareholders because uh, because uh, in the con- in the context of Sesim Finance, uh, dividends refer to a portion of the company's profits distributed to its shareholders because dividends are typically paid in cash, but they can also be issued as additional shares or other form of values to shareholders because. If you reward the shareholders through dividends payment, you are going to raise the shareholder value. And also, you are going to attract more investors. And this one will create a consistent uh, growth to the market. Now, uh, with this one, we projected to, to pay uh, 1,000 because in the, previous, uh, in the previous round we had uh, paid. So again, this one will pay 1,000. Then in terms of uh, our market uh, structure, we can see that our, uh, our uh, finance uh, position is, uh, is is okay because uh, we don't have any short term loan. Then uh, let's look at our projections. In this uh, in this round, we are projecting to have uh, an increase in sales revenue by 21.1 percent from 3 million to about uh, 4 million. Then uh, also in terms of uh, profits, we are also projecting to have an increase. So that's it for round six. So let's uh, meet again for round seven. Thank you and uh, God bless you.